Good morning, Ben Kinney. How are you? Good morning, Chad. Thank you for the nice introduction. I am very, very excited. We're going to go in. How do I get you from day one, January 2013, to the end of the year having the best year of your real estate career? Now, a roadmap is interesting. It, it can get you directly where you're going, like I-5 from the Canadian border all the way down to Mexico, or you can have those ones that are like a game of shoots and ladders, where you feel like you take three steps forward and, and four steps back. We want to make sure that we're going on the path that it's going to allow you guys to get maximum return on your investment. And I'm talking about the investment of your money, your technology, and your time. Now, I've, I've sat on a lot of roads, and I've driven down a lot of roads, and sometimes I feel like this guy. Sometimes I feel like I'm sitting right in the middle of the train tracks, and I'm just waiting for the train to come knock me down. But not lately, because lately I have a plan. And today I'm going to be sharing with you how to create a plan for your own real estate business using some tips and tricks I've used from, from some of my own mentors. Now the roadmap to success will take an agent today that's done, you know, zero transactions to the to a good agent that's doing 24 to a mega agent that wants to do 500. So what I want you to do is I want you to think about how does this apply to you and your business and try not to disregard it because you're at a higher level or a low lo lower level because this will apply to no matter where you are at in your own business. Now, the first thing we're going to talk about, and we talk about it a lot in my classes or, or when you're in person with me, is the real estate success principles. We believe that there are a list of things that if you do, and you do it consistently, you will find success. And the only reason why an agent is not being successful in their own real estate business today is because they do not understand, or they do not focus, or they have not mastered what we call, trademarked, the real estate success principle. Now the real estate success principles were created and most of the time we share three. And the, the first three real estate success principles are for the agent that is doing zero to 24 transactions. I figure that once an agent is doing over 24 transactions a year, they still need to master one, two, and three, and that will never come. You're always in a, in a path of mastery, but once you're getting past that 24 transactions, you're going to need to start thinking about principles number four and principle number five. And we're going to go through each one of those today. I'm going to share with you how it's going to apply. Now, if you're out there and you own a brokerage or you're running a real estate team or you have a, a business partner, this could also be the things that you hand down and you're teaching to the individuals in your business. And it'll make a lot more sense in a second, and we'll see how it applies to your actual business. Now, the first real estate success principle is say the right thing. Now, what I've learned that is if you say the right thing, you'll get a much higher percentage of results. For instance, if you walked into a seller and you said, you need to reduce the price, you're not going to get as good of a result as if you said something along the lines of, hey, I know that the price I tell you today is most likely greater than the price I'm going to tell you in six months because our market is changing. Therefore, I believe that we should do a price adjustment today so that we can take advantage of getting your property sold for the most amount of money in the least amount of time. What I'm talking about is say the right thing. The first real estate success principle is simple, uh, simply a script and dialogue. Now, on my team up here in, in Bellingham, Washington, Seattle, and Everett in the area that we service, we uh, practice scripts and dialogues every single day. And agents that have been on my teams for six, seven years, we still practice it every single morning at 8.30. We do it for about 20 minutes standing up. We role play. In most of my offices, we have agents that stand up in groups, on teams and not on teams, that all get together and they role play. And they're committed to mastering scripts and dialogues. Scripts and dialogues are not sleazy sales uh, tactics. They are ways to help your consumers, help your clients come to the right decision that's best for them. Now we have goals for our clients. For buyers, we're trying to help them get a good deal. We're trying to protect their interests. For sellers, we're trying to help them sell their property for the most amount of money in the least amount of time. See, that's just a simple script. And by using scripts and dialogues, we can help our clients come to the correct conclusion 
faster. And by mastering it, and by practicing scripts and dialogues on your own, you're no longer practicing it on your clients, which is what so many real estate agents do. Now, in the IMSD program, if you're an IMSD member, you know, make sure you, you click around in there. And it, there's tons of scripts and dialogues, written ones for listing presentations, for price reductions, for commissions. There's scripts and dialogues for converting internet leads and so on. I'll share with you one of my favorite scripts that I've learned. Now, this one was taught to me by, by one of my mentors and one of my friends, uh, Diana Kokoska. Diana taught me this simple script. And I've adapted it to be used in my own business. And it's simple. Who do you know that I should know? And if you're on the call today, write that down. Who do you know that I should know? This is the type of question that you should be asking everybody, no matter where you're at. You could be sitting in the restroom next to somebody and you knock on the door next. Hey, who do you know that I should know? Kidding. But you should be using it whenever possible. And I'll give you a good example. Let's say you're talking to an internet lead. You get an internet lead, let's say you're doing some pay-per-click advertising and you get it from your website and you call the person up and you say, oh, thank you so much for registering on my website. This has been, been here with XYZ Realty and I was just calling as a customer service call to see how you're doing and see if you're interested in, in taking a look at some homes and getting together. And most commonly, their response is going to be something along the lines of, you know, to be honest, we were just looking. We probably aren't going to buy for a while. We probably aren't going to buy for 9 to 12 months. It could be two years. And here's where the scripts and dialogues come into play. Oh, no problem. What I was thinking is I would love to be your realtor, whether you buy in a month, you buy in a year, you buy in two years, three years, or five years. I would just would like to apply for the job of being your realtor, and I'll never – pressure pressure you or push you into buying early but it, I would like to ask you one question before I let you go who do you know that I should know that's interested in a really good deal see I have a list of properties that I believe will not be available next week you know the types of properties you're gonna have four or five offers on that are probably 40 to 50 percent off um, full price you know where they sold a couple years ago and I'm looking for people that are really motivated that want to buy right now. And I know that you're not interested in purchasing at this exact moment. You're probably a year out, so I'm not even going to bother you with those types of things because they're not going to be around next week. But do you know somebody that could take advantage of this? Do you know somebody that's really interested in a good deal? One of two things is going to happen. The first thing is they're going to know somebody and they're going to hand you off. Well, you know my brother, he's really looking to buy right now and he would love a great deal. You should talk to him. His name's Chad. Or they're going to say, what, what, what? A good deal. No, I mean, we we would buy now if we could possibly get into something that's 40 to 50% off. What do you mean? Well, here's what I mean. I, I mean, I have a list of the five best-priced properties in town that I believe will not be around in a couple days, and I'd love to go over them with you. I know you're not in a hurry, but if you would buy the right one right now, maybe we could get together. See, the who do you know that I should know ends up being a takeaway if used correctly. So you're taking away the good deals from them because they're not interested right now. They want to wait till interest rates go up and prices go up and there's less choices to pick from, you know, the, the, the typical consumer. It'll get them motivated or it'll drive you leads right now. Now, sellers. You're in talking to a seller. The seller says, ah, you know, we don't want to list at that price or we don't want to reduce the price, et cetera, et cetera. Say no problem. You know, I I took this listed and I, listing and I'm committed to getting it sold. And it could be you know six months or twelve months or eighteen months before it gets sold based on the price that we're at and the activity that we're having. Uh, I just want to ask you a question. You know, um, my family gets gets fed when I when I sell homes and I have a lot of buyers because I do a lot of online marketing. But what we've noticed is there is a reduction in the amount of inventory. There isn't as many homes out there as as we have for buyers. So what I want to ask you is, who do you know? that I should know that's a really motivated seller that's willing to price their home aggressively so it sells right away that I could go talk to and match up with some of our buyers. And the seller might be like, what? Well, well, why not our property? Well, I've been showing your property to all of our buyers and I've been emailing out and marketing. And I've been going through our whole, you know, 33 point marketing plan. And what I found is that this current price at this current time in this current market, they're not interested. 
and probably my stats show me that we're at least six to ten percent off and I know you're not in a hurry so I'm not going to pressure you to reduce the price but who do you know that I should know this becomes a takeaway again and you're letting them know that properties are selling it's not that nobody's buying use examples for instance we have we have properties out there where they're getting four or five offers and it's just because they're pricing their properties aggressively and correctly based on this market see we are in a price war and a beauty pageant what that means is only the best priced properties that are the prettiest are actually gonna sell now the who do you know that I should know is a great sphere call as well when you're calling your sphere and you're saying hey happy holidays how are you doing uh, happy new year hope things are going good what do you got planned for this year what are your goals are you gonna take a vacation how's the family you're gonna get a dog sort of blah 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 Inevitably, they're going to do the reciprocal question, and they're going to say, "Well, how are you?" Well, I'm doing pretty good. In fact, you know, the business is actually pretty good. The market's changing a little bit. We're kind of going into a seller's market again, and uh, what that means is that that means that there isn't as many properties as there are actual buyers looking. And so, I would like to love to ask you a question since I have you here, and since you asked, who do you know that I should know? Who do you know that I should know? that's interested in, in taking advantage of this this kind of activity in the market that we're having that would be interested in selling their property right now to the list of motivated buyers that I have maybe some neighbors somebody at work uh, one of your friends maybe somebody that tried to sell their home over the last three or four years that that for some reason took it off or maybe they rented it out can you think of anybody who do you know that I should know now this is a powerful powerful script and it's simple it's not aggressive it's not salesy it's just asking for help everybody you know wants to help you you got to decide when using scripts and dialogues that you're going to be committed to mastery and you're going to use them as much as possible you're going to speak in scripted words because you know that that's the best thing for your clients and when you're doing that it comes out conversationally so it doesn't sound like a script it only sounds like a script to you while you're practicing it well let's keep going through the real estate success principles well, the second real estate success principle is say it enough times. Say it enough times. So what I'm saying is the first one, say the right thing, and the second one put together gets you almost to being extremely successful. All you have to do is say it enough times. What I know is activity equals results. If you commit to calling 50 people a day, on my team we call it do the 50, you will have results. You will be able to get at least one appointment a day if you dial 50 people. I promise. You cannot dial 50 people just straight from the phone book and not get an appointment or a referral for a lead. It's impossible. The only thing that could happen is you could be saying the wrong thing, but we can fix that. That's the scripts and dialogues. Saying the right thing is about having uh, what is that that uh, that foreign word that we don't like to use a lot in the real estate industry. It's um. Chad, help me. Uh, a, uh, you, uh, it's a silent yob. J at the beginning. There you oh, go. a silent, silent J. It's called a yob. Yob, people. See, these. what this is, is this is the job part of real estate. If you wake up every day and you time block and you commit to making the and doing the activity, making the emails, making the phone calls, knocking the doors, asking the questions, doing the job, then you'll be successful. This only takes two to three hours a day, in my experience, to dial 50 people. A good agent can get it done in two hours. A chatty one or one that takes a lot of time between calls will take them about three hours. Uh, note to self, turn off Facebook, turn off email, turn off you know notifications on your phone and just get through it and get it done. Now, the next real estate success principle is have enough people to say it to. Now, in the IMSD, the Internet Marketing Specialist designation, we spend a lot of time teaching you guys how to use scripts, and, and we have thousands of IMSD members that are on the call today. You guys understand that you have access to those scripts. You just got to print them out and practice it. Well, the number two, that's your responsibility as agent, committing to success. That's the job part that you're going to do. Well, the third one, that's what IMSD is all about. It's about having enough people to say it to. We call that leads. IMSD is about generating leads from Craigslist, social media, search engines, blogging like Active Rain. It's from classified services, from portals. It's about maximizing your internet lead generation so that you have enough leads to say it to and to say it enough times every single day. Personally, in my opinion, you need about 30 leads a month per agent on your team or per individual to be cranking out at least two transactions a month. 
Now, in our average price point across the United States, if you do two transactions a month at about 250 grand, we're going to end up uh, grossing about $180,000 in commission. So number three is a lead gen problem. We can teach you how to generate leads through online marketing and through prospecting, through mail, through all the other aspects that we teach in our program. Or you can just sign up. You can go to Market Leader or realestate.com or housevalues.com or some of the other vendors across the nation. You can just say, hey, I need, I need 30 leads a month or I need 20 leads a month or I need 50 or I need 100. This is how many I need to feed, feed my team or my business. Leads are easy to get. So really all you got to do is master practicing your scripts, saying enough times, time blocking commitment to it, and then number three, just make sure you have enough leads. If you have those three things, you are at least a 24 to 48 unit a year agent. That's all you got to do. Now there's some master agents that can do uh, um, 60 or 80 transactions a year with just the real estate success principles, one, two, and three, but if you want to get above and beyond uh, that you're going to have to go to the success principles number four and five. But first, let's talk about leads, listings, and leverage. When you're on the call today and you're thinking about, well, what is my plan for 2013? Understand that for so many of us, the market's changing. What I mean by that is the amount of listing inventory is reducing. Canceled expireds are, are getting harder to get. Uh, REOs come and go. Short sales might be tougher inventory is shrinking. What we've been doing for the last five years is changing again. We're going into a market very similar to, to seven years ago. And this might be a market where mail and, and more traditional marketing starts working again for you. But I want you to pay attention to the model on the screen. What I learned in the Millionaire Real Estate Agent book was about leads, listings, and leverage. Let's start with listings because I think it's the foundation of the real estate business. listings. If I was to go out there, Chad, are you with me? I am. Chad, if I was to go out there and I was to list your house for sale, do you think I would get sign calls? I sure hope so. And what would I call that? Well, you'd call that a lead. Yeah. And it, could I post it on Craigslist? And if I did, what would I generate? You'd generate some leads. And would I get referrals from you if I did a good job? Uh, I would plan to, which would be more leads. Yeah. See what happens? Would I get more people into your open house? Would I build a network? Would da 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 da? Would I get more leads from listing syndications? Da 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 da. See, listings generate leads. And Chad, you're you're a good agent, a smart guy. If I had too many leads to work, what would I need next? Uh, buyer's agent. So you would need leverage. Leverage. Yeah. And and if I had more leverage, so I wasn't spending time showing buyers or doing paperwork, what would I have more time to go get? More listings. More listings. If I had more listings, what would I get more of? More leads, Ben. Oh my gosh, look at the vicious cycle. I can't even believe this. Listings generates leads. With more leads, I can afford leverage. With more leverage, I can take some time off or I can get more listings so that I can get more leads so that I can get more leverage. Wow, this is vicious. Focus on having a listing strong business and then use the technologies that we teach in IMSD to generate a ton of leads from it and then learn leverage. Well, the fourth real estate success principle is about having other people do it for you. If you master scripts and dialogues and you're committed to making the phone calls every day and you have a lot of leads coming in or you have access to leads, what happens is that you run out of time. And the habit is to say, oh, I got clients today, so I'm going to not do my lead generation. I'm not going to make my calls or I'm not going to role play my scripts and dialogues which means you end up the, the rich man, poor man of real estate. I'm rich, I'm poor, I'm rich, I'm poor. It's like the government. You're up, you're down, you're up, you're down. You don't want to have that type of business. And the only way that you can do that is to start having other people do things that are not dollar productive for you. What I mean by that is leverage. Now, we could talk about team building or hire an assistant. You know, in our team, we use a lot of uh, college and uh, other interns, individuals that work for free for the opportunity to earn a role with us in the future. And, you know, funny enough, most of our interns have ended up getting hired with us. We use a lot of ways to leverage ourselves. We use foreign, you know, foreign um, virtual assistants in the Philippines from myoutdesk.com. We leverage ourselves so that somebody else can do our 80%. 
so that I can focus on my 20%. What we know based on the 80-20 rule is that 20% of my activities will give me 80% of my income. If you're only making 20% of your potential and income every year, it's because you're spending too much time in your 80%. Your 80% is monkeying around building websites, trying to make flyers pretty, delivering signs, doing transaction coordination, doing the junk. You need to find a way to get that off your plate. You need to find a way to pay somebody $50 to handle the paperwork. Give somebody $200 of closing to do all your listing management. Hire an assistant. Get a virtual assistant. Free yourself up so that you can have more time to make the income that you deserve so that you can do a better job of taking care of yourself, your family, and your long-term goals. Now, what we're taught is that no individual should have more than five people that they ever correspond with. If you have an organization greater than five people, you need to stack them like a pyramid so that I talk to Chad and Chad talks to X, Y, and Z. Never have more than five people, and I might add a personal assistant into that equation. The millionaire real estate agent taught us that we only need to focus on three great hires if we want to have a million dollar a year business. What that would be would be one great amazing admin, one great amazing buyer specialist, and one great amazing listing specialist. After we've hired those three people, they can hire or they can manage the other individuals and you can have a life worth living. If you're spending Monday through Sunday working and you're, you only know your family because you have a picture in their wallet, that is not a life worth living. You need to understand leverage. You owe it to your family. You owe it to yourself. If you're on the call right now, write this down. I care about my hourly wage. I care about my hourly wage. I ask myself that every single day. Am I doing something equal to the correct hourly wage that I expect as a return on my investment? If I could pay somebody a little bit of money to do it, which would be cheaper than what I consider my hourly wage to be, I'm going to do it. I'd prefer to spend my uh, free time with, with my loved ones, the people that I care about. I would expect you guys to do the same. The fifth real estate success principle, and I'm talking about if you want to have a really big life, if you want to have an amazing business, an amazing life, and you want to have a business instead of a job, is commit to finding other people. That means while your, your team members and the other people in your organization are doing the lead generation, you're going to commit to spending an hour a day finding the right person for your life. Some of you are thinking, well, I've got to find the right person for my love life. Some of you are thinking, I've got to find the right assistant or the right buyer's agent. Right? Some of you are thinking, I've got to find the right brokerage. I'm talking about lead generation to surround yourself with successful people, to be associated with good, positive people. Now, if you aren't committed to finding positive people to be around, you end up being around people that I like to describe loser as loser slime. Now, loser slime has two problems. One, it stinks. And two, it sticks to you. So if you walk too close to it, you end up smelling, and it's all over you. you got that nasty green loser slime because you're hanging around with negative people that think, oh, the market's over. Nobody can sell real estate. I need to go back to work in a Best Buy. By the way, I would go work at Best Buy if I, real estate didn't work out because I love Best Buy. Chad and I both love Best Buy. Anyway, being around the right people you got to make sure that the people that you're around are extremely motivated, hardworking, and, and committed to having a big life. Now, now, think about it. Take the people that are around you right now. Take your broker. Take your team members. Take your assistant. Uh, rank them. Think about it. Rank them 1 through 10. One, you know, like, say, 7 through 10, they're a great person. 4 through 6, they need training or they need to be let go. And if somebody ranks as a one through a three, they're what we call a turd. Chad, what do you do with turds? Flush them. Flush them. That's right. If you are surrounding yourself with turds, flush them. Focus on, on getting the four to sixes up to par, getting them training, getting them accountability, or getting them out of your business, and focus all your efforts on the people around you that are amazing, motivated, and, and committed to success. Now, I'm talking about big ideas today, and I'm talking about you guys having a big life. Now, I could be talking about how do we sell six homes a year. 
I choose not to waste my time, you know, thinking about how to solve that problem. Now, if that's what you want to accomplish, that's what I want you to do. But for me, I want to have a big life, and I want to help people that want to have a big life. Now, take the ideas that I have today, and we're going to do what I call right-size them. Right-sizing is about taking the ideas and making it applicable to your own life, your own business. Right-sizing says, if Ben shared this idea today about doing X, Y, or Z, it's way too big for my life. I don't have time, energy, just I got other things going on. But don't disregard it. Just shrink it down so it fits into your business. If I'm talking about calling 50, 50 people a day to sell 24 homes and you only want to sell 12, just call 25. Just make it right for you. If you're motivated and you want to sell 48 homes this year and, and you're committed to doing it, call 100. Just right size it. Just make it fit for you. Now, the first step before we start figuring out what are our goals for 2013 is coming up with a big vision. A big vision for yourself. This is who I consider I am. This is who I want to be. When I describe myself, when I look back at my life, this is who I really am. Now, what I like to do is I like to get you guys to sit back, just think of yourself, and just start describing. Now, don't describe who you are today. Describe who you want to be. Who are you going to be at the end of 2013? Close your eyes and just think, you know, I'm a, I'm a motivated person. I'm a giving person. I'm a helpful person. I'm a, I'm a teacher and a trainer. I'm an inspiration to, to people. I'm a positive influence on my family and my loved ones and people around the office. I, I inspire people to do more than, than they ever could on their own. You know, I'm a healthy person. I, I've, I've lost weight this year. I, I, I'm healthy. I'm going to be around to, to implement all these things that we're learning today. You know, I, I'm a good person. I, I'm a great father, and I, I'm, a, I'm a great mother, and I, I'm a great uh, boyfriend, and, and I'm a great child, and, I, and I'm a, you know, you start going through all these uh, things, and you start describing yourself. Well, what would you look like if you were really an amazing person? What I challenge you guys to do is just, just write down what are the traits of your perfect self? What would your hot words be? You know, keep it short. Just write a four or five sentence, a one paragraph about who you are at the end of the year. And write it like it was an advertisement for a job. Write it like you're saying, you know, I am this. And I'll, and I'll share one with you for me. I am, a res I am responsible for the growth and profitability of an aggressively growing national real estate team. I'm a master of recruiting, I'm a skilled presenter, I'm an experienced trainer and coach. I have an ability to attract, train, recruit, and retain, retain talent. And, and I'm learning based, I'm goal oriented, and I am above all and above everything extremely accountable. That's at the end of 2013 when I say, Chad, how do I do? I'm going to read this sentence to him, and, and he's going to grade me. He's going to grade me 1 through 10. If I'm a 1 through 3, Chad's going to flush me, and I'm not going to get flushed this year. I'm going to come up, and I'm going to be a 7 through 10 on almost all these, and then the ones I'm a 4 through 6, I'm going to commit to, to getting training and coaching and mentoring to help me myself get to the next level. Take some time to describe who you are and share with people. When you start sharing with people who you're going to be, you end up being that. Then start by describing your life. You know, one of my mentors, Gary Keller, shared this with me. And in 1957, uh, Walt Disney drew a picture of what his life would look like. He said that his life would be a combination of a merchandise and TV and 16 millimeter films. He would sell music and publications and comic strips. He'd have art corner shops and a distribution company. He would have this place called Disneyland. It would have gigantic mice walking around. It would have a big dog named Goofy. It would have a castle with princesses and rides and, and people would go there whether there are children or adults, and it would be amazing. And he dreamed this before most of this was ever even built. Well, see, this is a pretty cool vision. 
If you have a vision for your real estate business, if you have a vision for your life, you have a, a vision for all these different aspects, and you start sharing it with people, if your vision is big enough, people will want to be on that bus with you. Take some time to draw out what's the rest of your life look like. It doesn't have to be all business, but maybe it is. Maybe you've got a big business you're going to build, and it's going to be real estate and technology and training and all these other things. Or maybe you're going to draw out your life vision, and it's going to be a map of what you want to accomplish. And part of it's going to be family, and the other part's going to be charity, and the other part's going to be your faith, and the other part's going to be your health, and you're going to have a, a big business, and you're going to have savings and retirement, and you're going to invest in these things, etc. Draw it out. Tell us what it looks like. When I started doing this a while back, when Gary first shared the Walt Disney map with me, I started drawing out what would my life be like. Well, what would I have? Well, I'd have a mortgage company and real estate offices, and, and I'd have a software company and, and a designation called IMSD, and, and, and I had my real estate team, and my real estate team would have an REO division, and we would write a book, and uh, I would do some property flips, and I started drawing out, here's the rest of my life. Well, the funny thing is, I drew this a year and a half, two years ago, and we've accomplished most of the things on here. So now I get to go back and draw out, well, what's the rest of my life look like? How do I expand it? Well, I couldn't even imagine where I'd be today two years ago. But now that I'm here, I can imagine something even bigger. What does the rest of your life look like? So when I'm going out there and I'm trying to find talented people to work in my organizations, you know, all across, I show them the picture. This is what I'm going to accomplish. Well, right now, I'm hiring for this but I want you to be a part of the grand picture. If your vision is big enough to include the most talented people, you can have a huge life. Our goal is to attract people that are smarter, harder working, and better than ourselves. Draw your big vision. Draw your life. Make it visible. When, when you go into my bedroom, not that a lot of you guys get to go into my bedroom, but when you go into my bedroom, this is hanging on my wall. It's just on a whiteboard. I screwed it up to the wall, and I walk in, and I get to see my vision. When you look at my phone, you see all my goals. All my goals are written right on my phone, so I can see it. Every time I turn my iPhone on, it's the background of my screen. See, I'm committed to seeing what the rest of my life is going to look like, and I'm going to remind myself every single day until I get there. A big vision attracts big talent. A big vision attracts big talent. If you want to have a big life, you got to attract big talent. Now the next thing you gotta do is you gotta have big goals. You gotta have big goals. What I'm talking about is you gotta have goals for your life. And the goals for your life have to include financial, business, personal, and relationships. So many of us decide that we want to be really, really great agents, but we forget that we end up being a really poor husband or a really poor father or uh, really unhealthy because we gained a lot of weight or we aren't exercising or we have a really big business but we have no no retirement or, or no savings your goals all work together and I tell you what if you're you're on the call today and you're on in consulting with me it's because you know we work on all these things we don't get to talk about business unless your personal and your relationships and your financial goals are understand first. Once we get that figured out, then we move into your business goals, and it all works together. And those of you on the call today, you know who I'm talking about. And we have some massive people that are making huge changes in their life because they're committing to all four. This is about having a complete life. Now let's talk about personal goals because that's what I always start with. What I'm talking about is I'm talking about Let's set the goals for 2013, what you're going to do. Well, this year I'm going to learn to do something. You know, I'm going to learn to play an instrument. I'm going to learn a foreign language. Uh, I'm going to go somewhere. I'm going to take a vacation. You're going to do something for yourself. You've got to have personal goals of what drives you, right? And, and you've got to take, you got to kind of look at yourself naked, so to speak. You've got to be transparent with yourself, and you've got to think, at the end of the year I want to improve because I don't want to have a life where I'm not improving. What would it look like if I improved? For so many of us, it's you know we got to lose some weight, we got to exercise more, we got to get healthy. So write it down. I'm going to lose 22 pounds by X. I'm going to do Y by this date. Get serious about it. If you're not focusing on getting healthy, then all the money you're going to make is not going to last anyway. 
right? You're not going to be around to enjoy it. What I found is that if you aren't focusing on these things, you don't even have the energy to get the rest of it done. So write it down. Relationship goals. You know, if you don't, if things aren't good at home, if things aren't good around the office, if things aren't good with your friends or your loved ones, then you're going to have a hard time. One of your goals might be, I'm going to spend more time with my daughter. I'm going to spend more time with my spouse or with my husband. I'm going to become a better father. I'm going to become a better brother. I'm going to become a better boss. I'm going to become a better friend. Write down these goals and then think about what could you do to make it happen. And we'll help you break these goals down here in a second. Then we get to financial goals. What I'm talking about is pay off all your debt. How at the end of 2013 do you have no more credit card debt? We don't want to show up to work because we have to, because we're, we're under the gun. What happens when we have all those debt issues and financial issues where you don't have savings, one of your goals should be the amount of cash you have saved at the end of the year, is you end up with a lizard brain. Seth Godin talks about the lizard brain in his book, Lynchpin. See, the lizard, he has such a problem because his brain is so small. The only thing that the lizard can think about is what it's going to eat, where it's going to sleep, what it's going to drink, and who it's going to mate with. It sounds like a couple of my buddies. Its brain is so small that it has no ability to think about goals and vision and what it's going to accomplish in life. And when you're under financial stress because you're dealing things with, with debt and credit or you're not saving any money, then you get stressed. When you get stressed, you can't focus. You go home and eat ice cream, which makes you fatter, and it's a vicious cycle. Have financial goals. Write down. Understand how much debt you have understand how much cash you have saved and set a goal to get it. A lot of the financial goals that we end up helping you know, individuals accomplish is you know, I need to have X amount for retirement, I want to have X amount for security, and I want to send my kid to college. I want to make sure that my kid has $50,000 when he, when he graduates so that he gets to go and have what I didn't have. Well, if you take that and your goal is seriously about you know fifty thousand dollars for college, you got to say, well, how many years till my kid goes to school? Well, we got sixteen years left. You divide fifty thousand by sixteen, and you end up realizing, holy cow, I got to put two hundred and fifty to three hundred dollars a month in a savings account to really accomplish that goal. Well, if you're not serious about it, don't write it down. But I tell you, if you are serious about it. You set up a savings account out of every commission or every month. You write a check for $350 for the college fund, and you don't have a debit card to, ask to uh, access it. Then the next thing I want you to do is I want you to go home and say, child, Chad, Chad, I love you, and I'm going to send you to college. Chad, I love you, and I'm going to send you to college. Chad, I love you, and I'm going to send you to college. You're going to tell him that every week because I know that at the end of the time when he's ready to go to college, I'm not going to let him down because I've told him his entire life that I'm going to do that for him. I'm talking about being accountable. I'm talking about telling people what you're going to do and living up to it. If you don't tell people what you're going to do, it's very easy to hide. Financial goals. Got to have them. It's not impressive to make a million dollars if you spend a million one. Because the next one is your business goals. I'm talking about selling X amount of homes. By the end of the year, I'm going to sell X amount of properties. Business goals could be GCI. Well, I'm going to sell X amount of properties, and from that, I'm going to make a certain amount of gross commission income. And my additional business goal is I'm going to hire at least two more people for my organization. You come up with these four goals that we just talked about, you're going to have a massive life. You're going to have it written down. The only other thing you're going to have to do is you're going to have to track it you're going to have to pay attention to it. You know, if you're one of my, my good friends that I'm so proud of right now, you know, they're texting me a picture of their scale every single morning. By 6 a.m., I get a picture of a handful of people's scale when they stand on it. I know exactly what they weigh every single day because I want to know that they're making progress and I want them to pay attention to the incremental parts of it. Other people, they bring in their credit card statements so we know exactly how much they owe. We track it, we make it accountable, and we look at it in little tiny chunks. Goals are only scary if they're so big for you to imagine. What I want you to do is to take the time to write down some of your own goals. Take the time to write down what you want to accomplish in 2013, and now let's break it down into a mathematical equation that will allow you to accomplish it. I'm talking about accomplishing big goals. 
if you say this year I'm going to sell 50 homes and you get to the end of the year and you sell 30, how do you feel? I'd feel like crap. The issue is that most of us don't tell people that that's what we're going to accomplish, so the only person that we get to be accountable to is ourselves. That's dumb. That's why when I stand up on stage, I'll tell everybody exactly, this is what I'm going to weigh. This is, this is what I'm going to sell by the end of the year, and I'm committed to doing it because I don't want to be a liar to you guys. I don't want to show up at the end of the year and not do what I said, but it's easy to lie to ourselves. You think about that? It's easy to lie to ourselves. Now, I had the opportunity to get an advanced copy of the one thing. It's a new book that's coming out, I think, the next week uh, at the theonething.com. I think you can order books as of today. Uh, I got an advanced copy from Gary Keller and Jay Papazan. It's not a real estate book. It's not a promotional for any particular real estate company. It's about focusing on the one thing. What is the one thing that if you focused on would make everything else in your life easier or unnecessary? Think about that. What is the one thing that if you focused on would make everything else in your life easier or unnecessary? Because we can only focus on one thing at a time. And if you accomplish that one thing, everything else becomes easier. If you had more closings in your real estate business, you would have more money. If you had more money, you could hire more staff. If you had more staff, you wouldn't have to work as much. But it always comes down to the one thing. What's the one thing that I need to do today that's most important? And what I mean by most important, I ask myself the question is, does this thing that I'm doing right now allow me to accomplish my goal? If it doesn't, it's easy for me to say no. In the one thing, one of my favorite quotes is, you have to validate every single yes with 1,000 no's. You have to validate every single yes with 1,000 no's. Wow. The one thing talks about setting goals and accomplishing it and breaking it down into activities. I learned in the book about GPS. GPS, uh, Chad, what does a GPS allow you to do? Find out where you are and get to where you're going. Right. A GPS stops you from being lost. It's like having an iPhone nowadays, right? Well, a GPS is goals, priorities, and strategies. So I'm going to help you guys take a goal, lose weight, save money, pay for college, have a better life, sell X amount of homes, etc., etc., and break it down into what are the three priorities that if I focused on would allow me to accomplish that goal and then break down each one of those priorities or what are my five strategies to allow me itself to accomplish those priorities. I'm going to break it down for you guys and give you a roadmap on how to be successful in life. Goals, priorities, and strategies. We call us a one, three, five. One goal, three priorities, and five strategies. Now, what I want you to do is ask yourself the question, what is your main goal? What is the one thing that if I focused on would make everything else in my life easier or unnecessary? And then how would you define yourself successful if you accomplished it? You, know, like you can't say, I'm going to be a better person in 2013. You'd have to say, you know, my goal is to be weigh this amount, go to church this month, do whatever you would define as a, as a goal, but make it, make it tangible and measurable. And then for each one of your goals, you need to create three priorities that would allow you to accomplish that goal. I want to uh, I want to weigh 200 pounds by this event by January or July one. Well, my three priorities would be I need to eat right, exercise, and then maybe exercise or change my environment. And then my strategies would be well, my strategies to eat right would be remove unhealthy stuff from my house, make sure I had healthy stuff in my office, don't eat after 8 p.m., etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And then my exercise would be, you know, park further away, get a pedometer, walk more, exercise at least five times a week. You know, you break it down so it's such a no-brainer that you have to accomplish your goal. It's just a mathematical equation. Let's do it for your real estate business. A one, three, five should look like this. On a piece of paper, you're going to write what is your one goal, and then you're going to write out what are the three priorities that if I accomplish would allow me to accomplish my goal. And then what are my five strategies that if I accomplish these five strategies will allow me to accomplish one of my priorities, which would help me to accomplish my goal. So every goal has three priorities. Now, it could be four, it could be five, it could be two, but it's not 10 or 12. It's got to be a small amount. And then for every priority, you have a strategy to accomplish that priority. It's going to make more sense in a minute. 
it's going to make more sense for you guys. Let's take a look. Of I have a goal to sell two uh, to sell 24 homes in 2013 at an average price of 250,000 that would make me 180,000 in commissions. So this is a very reasonable goal. Now, if you want to net a million dollars, we're taught that you need to make gross 1.8 million. So this times that by 10. I need to sell 240 homes in 2013 at an average price of 250 that allowed me to make 1.8 million in commissions, which would allow me to net a million dollars. So right size it, times it by 10 if you need more money. But let's just start with 24 homes. If you want to work on my real estate team, the goal is to sell 24 homes minimum to stay working with us. 24 homes. That's only two a month. A blind squirrel could do that. To accomplish this goal, 24 homes, which is a, which is a good goal, I would need to accomplish these three priorities. Well, I would need to uh, close at least 12 buyer trans transactions because I'm going to have a, a balanced business. I'm going to close at least 12 tra seller transactions because I'm going to have a, a balanced business. And by the end of 2013, because I'm going to be selling 24 homes, I'm going to need an assistant. So by the end of 2013, I'm going to hire an assistant. So these are the three priorities that I have. Now let's break down each one of these priorities and figure out the strategies. Well, priority one, our goal would be to sell 24 homes in 2013. And my first priority would be to close 12 buyer transactions. Well, to close 12 buyer transactions, I believe my five strategies to accomplish that would be work my sphere, work Craigslist, use my Craigslist posting tool on my, um, on my website, host open houses at least once a week, do some pay-per-click advertising or hire somebody like Market Leader to do it for me. And then I'm also going to work agent referrals through Facebook groups and other stuff that I learned in IMSD. I believe that if I accomplish these five strategies, it will allow me to accomplish my one priority, which will allow me to get 50% to my goal. Does this all make sense? Do you see how the goals equal three priorities, which could equal five strategies, etc.? Well, you'll do the five strategies for each one of your priorities. So let's go to priority number two, which is sell 12 listings. So our goal is to close 12 seller transactions. Well, to get those 12 seller transactions, those 12 listings sold, I'm going to work my sphere. I'm going to work canceled expireds. I'm going to work farming. Maybe I'm going to buy some house values leads. I'm going to uh, work with builders and some banks. You could even break this down more if you want. And you could say, well, my, my second priority is to sell 12, 12 seller transactions, which means I'm going to need to list at least 18 to 24 properties, which means I'm going to need to go on at least 48 appointments, which means I'm going to need to call at least 50 people a day. You could break it all the way down and then come up with who you're going to call as your strategies. Well, your priority number three, let's say that by the end of the year you want to have an assistant or you want to have another team member, etc. Well, my goal is still to sell 24 homes. That's my main goal. My third priority to accomplish my goals would be to hire an assistant by the end of the year. And to do that, my five strategies would be I'm going to take a hiring class like Recruit Select. I'm going to Number two, I'm going to disk test at least one person. I'm going to check out personal profiles on people every single week. And we teach that in IMSD. What are the right personality profiles for assistants, buyers, agents, showing assistants, telemarketers, admin, etc.? But I'm going to I'm going to disk at least one person. It might be somebody at the grocery store. It might be a client. It might be a friend. It might be people I got from my advertising. My third strategy is I'm going to create an advertisement for for the position. I'm going to run it once a week. My fourth strategy would be I'm going to save at least three months salary for that position so that I don't feel feel weird about hiring them. And number five, I'm going to interview at least five successful assistants that work for other people and then try to steal them away from those people. No, I'm kidding. But you're going to interview and see what, what does successful look like? What does a really great assistant look like? What does a really great buyer's agent look like? And you're going to go find them. What does a really great showing assistant? You're going to go talk to them. And you're going to find that and make it work. These strategies will allow you to accomplish your priorities, which will allow you to accomplish your goals. Now, what you can do is we do what's called a 1355. Five. 1355. Five. What the 55 five is, is that for each one of those five strategies, you're going to come up with five strategies to accomplish that strategy. Let me give you an example. Well, my goal is to sell 24 homes in 2013. My priority, one of my three priorities, is to close 12 buyer transactions. One of my strategies is to generate some transactions for my sphere, 
Well, from my sphere, I'm going to get at least six transactions in 2013. My strategies to accomplish that strategy are, one, I'm going to call them monthly. Two, I'm going to email my sphere weekly. Three, I'm going to mail them monthly. Four, I'm going to visit them all quarterly. And five, I'm going to stalk them on social media monthly. And if I accomplish those five strategies that allow me to accomplish my strategy of work in my sphere, which will get me to accomplish my priority of closing buyer transactions, which will get me to accomplishing my goal, your real estate business is planned out. You have nothing else to do. The only thing you're going to do is you're going to sit back and you're going to look at this and you're going to say, well, who's going to do that? Well, call them monthly. That's my job, so I'm going to do that. Email them. That can be done by an admin or somebody in your office or virtual assistant. Mail them. That doesn't have to be me. Somebody else can do that. And then visit them. I guess I'll do that. And then social media, that could be me or it could be somebody else. That's pretty cool because you break down your business. You know exactly who has to do it. If you have no leverage that yet, that means you're doing all of it. But most of these things you don't have to do. So then you go in and you hire your assistant or whatever and you say, go do this. This is my strategy. Go make this happen. You, you'll know, Chad's on the call with me today, is every single thing that we do in our business, we do a 135 on. We want to do a, a career night in all of our offices. We have a 135 for it. You know, we're hosting a, 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 a bold event next week. We have a 135 to accomplish our attendance. We have profits for each one of our offices. Julene and I have a, have a 135 for the team, et cetera, et cetera. It's all broken out. Well, look at this, this sphere strategy. By the way, this is my exact sphere strat strategy, and it's the same thing that we use for the seller side too. But look at that. We call them once a month. That's 12. We email them once a week. That's 52. We mail them 12 times in a year, right? We, we visit them four times a year or, or invite them to parties, et cetera. And then we're going to stalk them online on social media once a month. That's 92 touches. You cannot touch somebody 92 times and not, one, go to jail, or two, get a ton of referrals. What you'll find when you break this out, if you just do your strategies correctly, your 24 goal you're going to laugh at because you're going to do 50 or, or 60 or 100. Break down, make your business mathematical, make your life mathematical, create personal goals, create uh, relationship goals, create financial goals, create business goals, and believe in yourself, believe that your activity equals results, and then track them. Track your weight every day. Track your bank balance every day. Track the number of calls that you make every single day. Track the number of people that you talk to, the number of appointments you go on, the number of opinions you have, the number of closings. I get a report every single Monday that tells me everything. How many listings did we take? How many expired? How many year to date? What is our pending volume? How many closed units? How many pended this week? How many showings do we have? How many Craigslist leads? How many pay-per-click leads? Et cetera, et cetera. How many price reductions? How many extensions? We track everything. Because I know that those activities will equal my results. And if I pay attention to it, I'll know it. Don't be surprised when you gain 10 pounds because you didn't weigh yourself in the last month. If you weigh yourself every single day, you know exactly what's happening. Pay attention to it. Don't be surprised you have no money in your bank account. Pay attention to it. Track it. Now, these are the steps to success. This is the roadmap to doing it. I challenge you guys to take the time to create a 135 for at least one part of your business and see all the ahas that you get. I challenge you to go home and have your children do it and have your spouses do it. I challenge you to have your team members do it. You're going to see how it adds up to your, your 2013 year being bulletproof. Nobody can stop you from doing what you want to do. Nobody can. The only way that, that you could have failure this year is if you choose not to show up, you don't track it, or you don't have the systems or the knowledge to do it. If you're not an IMSD member, I beg you to sign up. I beg you to try. Use the discount code DOUBLE. You'll get $200 off, and you get to pay it in three payments, $133. And you get my guarantee that if you sign up for IMSD, and if you don't like the program, any time in the first month, just call me back and I'll give your money back. I'm not doing this to make money. I'm doing this to educate the nation so that, so that we can continue to, to move our industry up. Now, I hope today was not what you're expecting. In IMSD, Chad and I, we teach you how to do pay-per-click advertising, SEO, Craigslist ads, a listing presentation. I teach you all the stuff. 
Today's call is not about that. Today's call is getting committed to your goals and getting ready to go out there and make it happen so that 2013 can be the absolute best year you've ever had. No excuses next December. You either do this today, you create your 135, you create a path to do it. By the way, you should go get a copy of the one thing, read the book, and have a great life.